Son, Holy Spirit. I'd like to say a quick Hail Mary first. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Here it is, last but not least. I like, to, I like to think they saved the best for last, but... Wishful thinking. Um, today's session is on St. Joseph Muscati, um, Italian saint uh, from Naples. Um, he was born July 25th, 1880 in Benevento, Italy. Died April 12th, 1927. So he lived... Uh, uh, almost 47 years, but he was 46 when he passed. Um, his parents were Francesco and, oh, I love these long names, Rosa de Luca de Marchesi de Rosetto. How's that sound? <laughs> I don't know why they like long names over there. He was the seventh of nine children. <clears throat> By the way, who says the middle child can't be successful? I'm a middle child, so there. Um, baptized six days after birth, first communion at age eight, and confirmed at age ten. That was interesting to see that confirmation was so early compared to what we do here. Um, he moved to Naples in 1884 um, and lived there the rest of his life. He was canonized in 1987 by Pope St. John Paul II, and his attributes are the white coat. His patronage is bachelors, people rejected by religious orders, and physicians. He graduated from Lucio Vittario Emanuele College, or the second college in Naples. Um, his he had a brother who suffered a permanent head trauma, falling from a horse during the military service, um, which inspired St. Muscati. He received a doctorate of medicine from the University of Naples in 1903 with his thesis on hepatic urogenesis, which is, it's like a, uh, hepatic is, has to do with the liver and urogenesis is uh, some weird medical term, but it's uh, like um, I looked it up, and boy, it gets complicated. <laughs> Anyways, I'm an engineer. I'm not a bio. <laughs> yeah. He joined the staff of um, Aspedale Degli Incurabili, or the Hospital of the Incurables, and eventually became administrator. The future saint inherited his father's piety and intellectual gifts. His father was a lawyer. Um, Giuseppe's unexpected, or Jeff, Giuseppe, by the way, is Joseph in Italian, uh, unexpected decision to study medicine rather than law could be traced to the incident uh, in his adolescence. Um, in 1893, of which his older brother Alberto, a lieutenant in the artillery, fell from his horse, and he sustained an incurable head trauma. So for years, Giuseppe helped care for his injured brother at home, and as he matured, he reflected on the limited effectiveness of human remedies and the consoling power of religion. He is most famous for doctors wearing white coats. So if you ever wonder why doctors wear white coats, you can thank Joseph Muscati. Um, 
put a little humor in here. The most, most of you have kids, kids, most of you who have kids prob probably know who Curious George is, the man with the yellow hat. Well, St. Joseph Muscati, he's the man with the white coat. So anytime you see a doctor in a white coat, hopefully you will be reminded of St. Joseph Muscati. So <clears throat> there's the man in the white coat. So you can even get the, the, the toy just like the uh, Curious George toy. Yeah. Working life and vow of chastity. St. Joseph Muscati wanted to become a Jesuit, but was rejected. Uh, after Joseph Muscati made a vow of chastity, afterwards he made a vow of chastity for the rest of his earthly life and practiced charity in his daily work. He viewed his practice of medical science as a way to alleviate suffering, not as a way of making profits. He retired regularly to prayer attended daily mass and would use the patient's faith as well as the sacraments in his treatments. He refused to charge the poor for their treatment and was sometimes noted to send a patient home with a prescription and a 50 lira note in an envelope. So around 1912 or 13, he made a, the vow of chastity, consecrating himself to the life of celibacy and, and um, aspired to be a Jesuit, but it was the Jesuit priests who discerned that it was really God's will and call for Dr. Muscati to remain in the world as a physician. However, St. Joseph Muscati retained a sincere esteem and veneration for the priests and religious and sped to their aid as often as, as he was called. He also encouraged others to share his esteem for the priesthood and advise them to pray for them because it is necessary to pray for priests because they are easily forgotten by the living since Christians often consider that priests do not need prayers. Uh, that's interesting. I had to stop and think about that. And it's like, yeah, you know, how often do we pray for our priests, you know? Um, So he lived a life of service. His work was his vocation. Um, and I, I think an honorable one. I think it's, you know, people easily esteem um, people dedicated in the medical profession. And his life was uh, a testament to Matthew 25, uh, 31 to 46. You know, come blessed by my father, you know, you, you will inherit the kingdom for, you know, when I was sick and hungry, you, you fed me and you visited me. And he lived that. His, his life was, was that, the personification of that scripture. So he attended daily mass. He had had a very strong devotion to Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception, which is, was a fairly new uh, dogma at the time because it was in, only in 1858 that that became an, became an official dogma of the church. Again, St. Joseph Muscati's work ethic was a great witness. Um, and this has reminded me of some scriptures here. Uh, Colossians 1, 16 to 17. For in him were created all things in heaven and earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. And the other scripture this reminds me of is Luke one thirty seven, and this is um, uh, when Mary visits Elizabeth the visitation, and, and and part of that was you know when when Mary conceived and Elizabeth conceived, um, for nothing it will be impossible with God. So. 
those are some of my favorite scriptures, and they've helped me in my career. Now, I'm an electrical engineer, so I deal with a lot of problem-solving type stuff, and sometimes the problems can get very challenging. Um, and for me, engineering, thinking logically, well, if God's the author and the creator of the universe and nothing is impossible with God, well, then why should it be impossible to come up with solutions to problems at work? And so that's kind of the mindset and the approach I've, I've sort of always had with my faith and my work. Um, as a new Christian, I, I even remember praying in college. I was taking a uh, final exam, total brain cramp on a question, so I just started praying, you know, asking God for help for the answer. And all of a sudden, the answer just, it just popped right in my head. It, I didn't even think through the problem. It was like, here's the answer, and I put it down, and that helped me pass my test. And it was kind of weird, because after the test, I walked out. I felt like I was cheating because God was giving me the answers. <laughs> what a way to get through college. Yeah. Another, uh, very distinctly, another time I was at work, I remember very distinctly, uh, I was given a solution to a problem without thought. I was trying to solve a, an oscillation problem on a, on a particular thing, and it was like, put a capacitor right there, for anyone who knows who, what that is. So I did that, and the problem just magically got solved. So, great, this is awesome. <laughs> so, that's... Uh, those are kind of some miraculous things that kind of really stuck with me. But in, but in general, work wasn't always like that. I, it was really had to work hard, really had to think through a lot of problems. But, but never, never did I ever give up hope or um, believe that there wasn't any kind of a solution to a problem. And if, eventually you'd work it through or find it or discover it. And, you know, I, I give all the credit to God who's created everything and, no, again, nothing's impossible with him. So as a result, I think I was generally pretty successful in my career. Um, and I listen to people at work sometimes, and they say, oh, this is impossible, we'll never, that'll never work, or whatever. And, and that's kind of funny, because I'm like, nope, don't tell me that. That's just not part of my vocabulary. So that's one of the things I love about, about my faith. Um, and I think St. Joseph Muscati was a lot like that. And so he, he kind of resonates with me. So his life illustrates how Catholic faith and practical charity um, are united, united a layman with God to such an extent that the power of God ultimately worked through him. He combined the intellectual with faith and humanity. Again, he practiced medicine at the Hospital for the Incurables in Naples, of which he became the administrator, demonstrated an extraordinarily, extraordinary skill in diagnosing patients' ailments, uh, attributed to ability to synthesize traditional methods with findings of the new science of biochemistry, his approach was uh, holistic, but extended this beyond what can be learned. You must treat not only bodies, but also souls with counsel that appeals to their minds and hearts rather than with cold prescriptions to be sent to the pharmacist. So Dr. Muscati was at the forefront of medical technology, yet maintained or combined this with his faith, dignity, and humanity of each human person. That's, that's beautiful. I love that. That's just taking faith and science and humanity and putting them all together. So his approach was indeed holistic, but it extended beyond what can be learned in the lecture hall or the laboratory. Remember, he once wrote to a young doctor, one of his former students, 
that you must treat not only bodies but also souls with counsel that appeals to their minds and hearts rather than with cold prescriptions sent to the pharmacist. Like just a beautiful way to practice medicine. He practiced heroic charity. St. Joseph Muscati uh, voluntarily helped evacuate a nursing home in an endangered area when Mount Vesuvius erupted. That was interesting. I, didn't, I, I remember the Mount Vesuvius was what covered Pompeii, I believe, way back when, and I didn't know that was still an active volcano. Personally moved frail and infirm patients to, safe, to safety minutes before the roof of the building collapsed under the ash that was piling up on it. He served beyond uh, the call of duty during the 1911 cholera ep epidemic and treated approximately 3,000 soldiers during World War I. He was a man of ethics and high moral character, known as the Holy Physician of Naples. He made efforts to humanize the medical profession. He was outspoken against the practice of nepotism. And nepotism is basically the, the preference of family over qualifications and bribery that often influenced appointments uh, at the time. He wrote a letter to the student, not science, but charity has transformed the world. So the Holy Physician of Naples, as he was called, also made efforts to humanize the medical profession as an institution. He was outspoken in his opposition to unfair practice of nepotism and bribery that often influenced appointments at the time. He might have pursued a brilliant academic career, taken a professional chair and devoted more time to research, but he preferred to continue working with patients and to train interns. In another letter to a student, Dr. Muscati wrote, not science, but charity has transformed the world, explaining that only a few go down in history as men of science, but all can leave the world a better place by their charity. He's also quoted in saying, one must attend first to the salvation of the soul. I think I said this already. And only then to the, the body through the practice and help. Uh, through his practice, yeah, he helped many lapsed Catholics to return to the sacraments. Uh, his life story was made into a movie in 2007. Um, I've actually seen... Uh, Part of this on EWTN. EWTN. Uh, it was actually broadcast, I think, a few months ago. Um, also sounds like a good name for an Italian wine, Muscati, right? There's also a book that uh, was originally written in Italian. It's in English, so you can actually get a book if you're interested in reading uh, reading his life. It's a nice. I hear it's a nice nice read. Translated into English. Uh, he died on April 12th, 1927. Um, at age 46, he attended Mass that morning, receiving communion as he always did, and spent the day in the hospital as he always did, um, and sat down that evening in an armchair in his office and just passed away. Um, didn't say whether he had a heart attack or not, but, but I'm not sure what the circumstances were. So miracles attributed to St. Joseph Muscati. First, he was claimed as a miracle worker before his death. Again, he was able to accurately diagnose and prescribe for any patient merely just by listening to the symptoms. Um, known to be responsible for impossible cures. And the reports of good works continued well after his death. Um, his canonization miracle was um, there was a young iron worker dying from leukemia, and the young man's mother dreamed of the doctor wearing the white coat 
whom she identified as Muscati when shown a photograph. And not long after, the woman's son went into remission and returned to work. So he was beatified by Pope Paul the Sixth on November 16, 1975 and canonized October 25th, 1987 by St. John Paul II. His feast day is November 16th. He's the first modern doctor to be canonized. Um, he rem his remains are in uh, uh, Italian, I can't pronounce, um, Gesù Nuovo Church in Italy. Again, his patronage is bachelors, people rejected by religious orders, and physicians. He was initially buried in the cemetery of uh, Poggio Reale, but his body was exhumed three years later and reinterned in the church of uh, Gesù Nuovo. And today a marble stone marks uh, where his original grave was. So I think uh, Joseph Muscati is the answer to our health care crisis or health care woes. So now that he's a saint, He's on call 24 hours a day, no appointment necessary, no need to worry about pre-existing conditions. He makes house calls, has a functional pager, he's only a prayer call away, and so I, I think he's the solution. Seriously though, um, St. Joseph Muscati treated thousands during his life time using natural means. Now that he has gone on to his heavenly reward, he continues to have office hours and works amazing cures on a regular basis. The Jesuits staff the church at Jesu Nuovo in Naples, where the saint is entombed, post accounts of new medical miracles at their website. They post uh, accounts of medical miracles at their website. Um, in recent years, St. Joseph has cured a young man who ruptured his spleen in a motorcycle accident, restored to health a youngster who during a severe asthma attack turned blue and suffered brain damage, and even helped married couples who were having difficulty conceiving a child. All his life he had seen in the broken bodies of those he served another body. As he was to say to anyone who asked why he served the sick, it was in their faces that he saw the face of Christ. So in conclusion, um, our work is our vocation. And again, St. Joseph Muscati personified that. Through work, I think we, we witness to God. We all have a vocation to work, as, especially as men. And this reminds me of another scripture, Thessalonians 4, 10 through 12. But we urge you, beloved, to do so more and more, to aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands as we directed you. That's a, that's a verse that's always inspired me, and it reminds me that my work is not a job. My work is part of my faith, and it's a witness, and that's one of the ways I witness Christ to the world. The miraculous power of the holy physician's intercession in heaven is explained by his conscientious practice of Christian charity while on earth. As he wrote to a colleague, only one science is unshakable and unshaken, the one revealed by God, the science of the heart of the hereafter. In all your works, look to heaven, to the eternity of life and of the soul, and orient yourself then much differently from the way that merely human considerations might suggest. And your activity will be inspired for the good. Our work is not necessarily a job, but a vocation. We are chosen for which reminds me of the following scripture, which I just read. Thessalonians 4, 10 to 12. And that's it on Joseph Muscati.
And now for the questions. Do you feel your work is a vocation? How do you witness God through your work? And how do you offer up your work to God? Thank you. Oh,